everyone. My name is Mark McDonough, and I'm a medical consultant for Mindray Biomedical here in Shenzhen, China. And today, I'd like to introduce to you the Mindray Hepatis Ultrasound System, which is a non-invasive and quantitative dedicated to measuring liver fibrosis and stetosis. The Hepatis system makes use of technologies named VITA, which visualizes the liver tissue and measures the liver stiffness. The other parameter is called LISA, which measures liver stetosis. It's able to assess the liver stiffness and stetosis in a non-invasive and quantitative manner. Now let's get started on how to use the system. First, you'll need to make sure the patient has been fasting for at least two hours. So the first thing to do is ask the patient to relax, stay calm for about 10 minutes, laying down on the bed or stretcher. While the patient is relaxing, you can input the patient demographic information, name, sex, age, height and weight, and so on, and then just click done when you're finished. Next, select your probe of choice, and then select exam type. The system offers three different exam types for you to choose from. Adult abdomen, which is the most common one. High penetration, which is for overweight or obese patients. And the pediatric mode is for children. Moving on, the patient should be relaxed on the exam table or bed and you should also ask the patient to raise their right arm toward their head or above their shoulder. Then, obtain a good image by placing the probe on the right side of the patient, and if it's possible, find the best image using the last two lower ribs so that the liver tissue fills up the region of interest box, which is displayed on the screen and also trying to avoid any images that display the bladder or big vessels or biliary tracts or any other lesions. Continuing on, the Hepatis system uses a unique feature only offered by Mindray, which uses two sensor bars for better quality control. The inner bar indicates pressure and the outer bar indicates respiratory movement. Measurements cannot be made when the bars are colored orange, which would indicate the pressure is either too low or movement is too high. You can only measure when both bars are colored green. Okay, the next step consists of the smart data collection. The Hepatis system offers two different scanning modes. One is called Q-Scan and the other is called C-Scan. In the Q-Scan mode, the system gives you 10 measurement results in 7 seconds, where invalid values are removed automatically from the system, while the C-Scan mode offers you a way to choose a varying amount of measurements depending on the needs of the user. Now we want to trigger the measurement. So get a good B-mode image, apply pressure on the probe, and if necessary, ask the patient to hold their breath. When you're ready, press the button on the probe, or you can also click the start button on the screen. And please, please remember to make sure to hold the probe steady during this process. It's very, very important. Every one measurement will give you a group of 10 valid results. The median of E value and the LISA value will both be displayed on the bottom of the screen. The E value represents the liver stiffness and the LISA value represents the stetosis level of the liver. Make sure that the IQR divided by median of E value is less than 30% and the IQR for the LISA value is less than 40. The next step is for saving the results and printing the report. 
simply click the Save the Result button on the screen, and then you can preview the report in printing mode. And remember, you can always start a new measurement if the current results aren't acceptable. Now let's discuss some case studies. Case number one. This patient has a median E value of 9.2 kilopascals and a median LISA value of 220 decibels per meter. I think these results are acceptable because the IQR divided by the median V value is 11.4%, which is less than 30%. And the IQR value for the LISA value is 14, which is less than 40. Since both of these values are within the acceptable limits, we can now get a final analysis. Considering the liver stiffness with respect to histopathology table and excluding some necrotizing inflammation of the liver, biliary diseases, and congestive liver disease, we can make a rough conclusion that the stiffness of this patient is relatively high and may have risk of fibrosis. But this patient does not have a fatty liver because the LISA value is normal and has no risk of fatty liver. Case number two. This patient has a fatty liver. The E median value is 5.8 kilopascals, whereas the LISA median value is 280 decibels per meter. Both values are reliable because the IQR divided by the median of E is less than 30%, and the IQR value for the LISA measurement is less than 40. So therefore, we can make a rough conclusion that this patient has no risk of fibrosis, but a moderate fatty liver, according to the stiffness and cetosis and histopathology table. Now the last case, case number three. This is a patient with a severe fatty liver. The median of E is 7.8 kilopascals, and the median of LISA is 405 decibels per meter. Both values are acceptable because the IQR divided by the median of E value is 3.8%, which is less than 30. And the IQR value for LISA is 5, which is less than 40. So when we match this data to the stetosis and histopathology table, this patient is at risk of severe fatty liver. The E value is a bit high, which is probably caused by severe fatty liver. And we also need to check whether this patient has hepatitis v, B, hepatitis C, alcoholic liver disease, or other liver diseases before we make a comprehensive diagnosis. The next step brings us to the trend analysis section Trend analysis is made possible uh, as the patients will receive multiple exams over time and the measurement trends from all exams will indicate the progress of the liver disease.